Welcome, viewers, back to the Atheist Roundtable with David Oliver, your host, that is I, the Preaching Humanist, and my regular co-host over here, my buddy Andrew. Say hello to Andrew. And today hello. I have a special guest. I have Daniel Earls. Uh, Daniel's been with me before. Uh, he's done some activism with me. And I want you to tell my viewers before we get into our discussion on apathetic atheism a little bit about what you're doing and a little bit about your past. Yes. So right now I co-host the Epistemic Podcast with Anthony Magnabosco and Read Nice Wonder on the Street Epistemology YouTube channel. And I recently launched my own YouTube channel. It's called Objectively Dan. Um, and you can find me on there and on Twitter as well. Um, and I don't have a lot of content on there yet. Um, I've been really busy doing collaborations with other people, and I've been busy with school and my job and stuff. And I also have a conference coming up. I'm going to the Secular Student Alliance National Conference Ooh. in Columbus, Ohio in two weeks. Nice. I'm giving a workshop on street epistemology. Um, and it's exciting because it is the first workshop that's going to be done, as far as I know of, that uh, was done by someone who used to be on the other side of the camera, you know, an interlocutor. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that's kind of my story. I was uh, I was an interviewee of Anthony Magdabosco a few years ago for his YouTube channel. One day I kind of came back around, decided that, you know, he was kind of right. But uh, <laughs> it, it took a little while of, you know, deconstruction and uh, it took about a year and a half, you know, of, of doing mm -hmm. that. And now I'm I'm on the other side. I'm, I'm talking about the issues. I'm, I'm here and uh, you know, atheist is a technical term for me, as you know. I, I mm -hmm. care about secular issues in general, mm -hmm. um, but I'm excited that we're going to talk about this topic that we yeah. have today. So, yeah, yeah, um, I want to keep the topic on uh, atheist apathy, mm -hmm. uh, and you were discussing this earlier, Daniel, that mm -hmm. there is apathy in all different type movements. Mm -hmm. right? There's always going to be a large percentage of people that really don't care, that do not have much passion. Uh, and there's always a small percentage of people that want to get out there and make changes who are wired a little differently maybe too, but mm -hmm. are more overt. Um, before we get into it, Andrew, we had a good time yesterday, didn't we? We're oh, out there. yeah, Town Lake, yeah. Yeah, it was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had uh, maybe just two or three Christians approach us, but it was well worth it. We got lots of thumbs up, lots of people saying, hey, uh, you know, we agree, and as they were jogging by. Uh, yeah. lot, and uh, we had a return visitor who uh, was a Christian, and he came back to have a pretty in-depth conversation with us uh, for the second time. And, and you know, he, he's obviously, we got him thinking. You yeah. know, he's thinking a lot more. He's, hear, he's hearing what we're saying, and he's, 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 he's coming across open-minded, mm -hmm. you know. And he's still, you know, he'll still make his, his Christian arguments. Uh, but, uh, you know, we can, I, it kind of feels like you can tell... He's starting to lose confidence in his yeah. Christian arguments. Yeah, you know? he's such and he's, a nice guy, too. Yeah, though. yeah. He was yeah. such a nice guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we did. You'd be real proud of me, Daniel. Oh, yeah. I used the Socratic method a Good lot job. yesterday, mm -hmm. didn't I? Look at now, you. the first guy we talked to, I got a little, a little overboard there. I got a little fired up. Mm. Man. But mm. All right, let's talk about uh, apathy. So let me give you a quick little definition. And if you all watched my episode on this and you viewers heard me talk about this, let me briefly go over it again. Apathy is simply a lack of feeling, emotion, interest, and concern. It's the state of indifference. Um, suppression of emotions such as concern, excitement, motivation, or passion versus passion, a feeling of intense enthusiasm or being very effusive and excitable, right? Towards or compelling desire for someone. We're not going to talk about passion for someone. That'd be a fun topic to talk about. Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk about passion for something. And for us, it's atheist activism. So we're all activists here. Um, so before I open it up to you guys, back 30, 40 years ago, when I was like your age, right, mm -hmm. uh, as a young Christian preacher, fellow Christians would always tell me, David, you're so passionate. Where do you get this passion from about converting sinners to Jesus and, and praying and reading the Bible and all? And I've also, I've wondered because Christians, a lot of them have this passion for their belief system. They have a passion for prayer, winning souls, going to church, tithing, giving to churches. And honestly, it disturbs me a little bit. In our community, I don't see a lot of that. Mm -hmm. I see just a very small percentage of fellow secular humanists and atheists that really have that passion about going out and challenging believers and so forth. 
so that's really what I want to talk about today. Um, so do you guys think that we should, as an atheist group, have that same type of passion as believers do for what they believe? Well, it's not surprising to me that we don't see that amongst our movement. I mean, we don't have the same instruction book that's telling yeah. us to do all the same thing. You put two atheists in a room for two hours, and uh, they're going to be arguing about something, you know. Um, and that works to its advantages and its disadvantages. One, I mean, we're more free thinkers. We're more independent, mi independently minded, so we're able to, you know, look at things more objectively in one sense. But in another sense, it's hard for us to always see the same thing at the same time. Um, and so it's really less of an atheist issue. It's more of a secular rights issue is why I see it because, mm. I mean, what are we being passionate about, right? What are we being active about? Well, we're being active about a discrimination. We're being mm -hmm. active about people feeling safe in their communities um, who, you know, want to profess a non-belief and profess criticism without fear of being reprimanded in some, you know, legal way or even mm -hmm. in social ways. Um, I, mean, I mean, there's a lot of different things that kind of fall under that umbrella. Um, so when we talk about activism, I think it helps to kind of be more specific on what kind of activism we're talking about because that could mean a whole lot of different yeah, things. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so Andrew, do you want to share anything before I... Yeah, uh, you reminded me of uh, the joke I've heard a few times about how, um, you know, you never see atheists going and knocking on people's doors mm -hmm. to tell them, you know, there probably isn't a God. You know, there's, why would you do that, mm -hmm. right? You know, there, mm -hmm. so we don't, it's, so unlike the theists, we don't have something to sell in that regard. Uh, so, you know, a lot of times, yeah, when a lot of people, when they either lose the faith in religion they once had or they were secular all along, they tend to just kind of, they just tend to not get involved in the debate at all. They just mm -hmm. kind of drop out of it. Well, I don't believe in deities, so I'm just going to live my life and, and live and let live and no big deal. Well, the problem is, particularly when we have lots of people in this country who want to promote a theocracy, want mm -hmm. to turn us into theocracy, uh, you, we can't afford to unilaterally disarm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that never ends well. Uh, they're out there, you know, you know, all day long, 24-7, you know, pushing their uh, agenda on society. And those of us in the atheist community should be willing to step up and counter that as much as yeah. we can uh, or it won't turn out pretty. Yeah. You know? mm. Well, here's the thing I get from Christians and even fellow atheists. David, why do you and others do what you do? Why don't you just let Christians believe what they want to? Because it's a peaceful, benign belief system, this Christianity <laughs> thing. Now, of course, all three of us here were once believers. Um, and I could tell you with my background, it is not a benign system. Our beliefs define our vision of the world. They dictate our behavior. They determine our emotional responses to other human beings. When a belief system like Christianity infiltrates and impedes human progress in so many ways, that's one would, what we need to fight against. So when I talk about activism, for me, I'm talking about keeping their beliefs, this primitive barbaric belief system in the Bible out of politics, number one, keeping the separation of church and state up. That's one of the reasons, keeping it out of the science classrooms, and there's so many other things, LGBT rights and all the other things that Christianity imposes on other people. So that's why, that's one of the reasons I do it, and there's so many others too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and apathy in general has been a pet peeve of mine. Uh, you know, I engaged in activism uh, in on other issues in the past, and before I started, you know, doing an atheist activism, and, and yeah, it it drove me nuts because I'm looking around, I'm thinking, you know, we could make so much more progress if, you know, people just cared more, if they just mm -hmm. saw the importance and didn't, you know, sit back and expect other people to, to uh, resolve it. And, you know, I, I understand the appeal of apathy for a lot of people. I mean, it's safer, it's easier, it's... Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I, can I share a couple of quotes, sure. uh, you know, that, that some people who would, can say it more articulately than I could. I mean, obviously there's the classic from uh, Plato, the price of apathy is to be ruled by evil men. And we see that all the time. Uh, you know, the, if the good guys are sitting at home not fighting and the bad guys are out there on the field, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's not going to turn out well. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of... Uh, 
an Alice Walker quote I didn't put in my notes here, but uh, it, it's one of my favorites. Uh, she said that uh, activism is my rent for living on the planet. Mm-hmm. You know, and that really resonated with mm-hmm. me. It's like, yeah, if I'm going to live here, if I'm going to, you know, you, you know, do my thing mm-hmm. and eat and sleep and everything, you know, shouldn't I be paying some rent? Shouldn't I be yeah. doing something? You know, and and I I, I would I, I wonder why that doesn't resonate with more people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's the Albert Einstein quote I have here: "The world is a dangerous place not because of those who do evil, but because of those who look on and do nothing." Mm-hmm. You know, so, and I believe Einstein, did he, he, we see, we kind of see him as an atheist, but I don't know if he ever came out and said he's an atheist, but he did, he also famously said, when you, uh, when you understand why you don't believe in other people's gods, you'll understand mm-hmm. why I don't believe in yours. Right. So right. he was pretty atheist, you know, whether he said it or not. And uh, the last one I was going to get to is from Daniel Dennett, but I think it, I, I might want to save that for what, uh, uh, till later, because I think you're going to enter that territory. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, uh, again, the question's always there from liberal Christians, from apathetic atheists, and many other people. Mm-hmm. Why would I attempt to change or deconvert a Christian? That's a good question, but I always have a great answer for that because, again, this belief system does infiltrate and pose its will and try to change our government, our science classrooms, and many other things. So the question always remains, and I think, for me at least, truth is, the old quote from the 18th century, is there are thousands hacking at the little branches of evil to only one that strikes at the root. To me, a root cause, one of the main root causes of many of the problems we have stems around these supernatural belief systems of religion. That's why I think we should be activist about it in many different ways. So that's why I do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a way to do it. We do it in kindness. We're motivated by humanism, right? That's what motivates us because we care about humanity, societal health. We see that secular societies around the world, like our buddy the other day we talked to, mm-hmm. right? He couldn't comprehend when we explained to him that secular, more atheistic societies are much healthier, less crime, less poverty, less homelessness, um, and more rationality and more peaceful countries and so forth in every way. So that's what I push for is a more secular, at least government, right? And giving people the right to believe whatever they want. Yeah, I agree. Uh, You know, I get asked that a lot too. Why do you do what you do with street epistemology? And I always tell people, well, beliefs inform actions. um, And people do actions because they believe something. You know, they believe something's going to work if they do the thing that they do. Or uh, let's look at what Jeff Sessions just said. Um, about the recent immigrations, okay? He's making this policy supposedly because the the Bible is telling Mm -hmm. him to do this or he's using the the Bible to justify his actions. Either way, there is a precedent there being Mm -hmm. set um, by by doing these kinds of things because of these belief systems that are kind of in the background of people's um, actions. And so it, to me, seems like the most responsible thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, to talk to people about their beliefs and to yeah. um, see where those beliefs lead them because they guide everything that we do in some way or another. That's why that we have this show right here because yeah. we believe that we're making a difference and because we want other people to join us in that. It, it affects everything. So, yeah, because yeah. we care. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and so many, even fellow atheists sometimes, are you, are you angry? Are you mad? Why are you trying to go out there and do this? No, it's, mm-hmm. we're driven by compassion. We're driven by compassion for humanity. And we want other people to come to the enlightenment. And it sounds very arrogant to Christians by telling that, but uh, I tell them that all the time. I tell them my testimony. I tell them that life is is better for most of us that let go of this stuff. But again, if it wasn't dangerous to societal health, and we've got indicators and evidence out there that it is, then I wouldn't care. That's why you don't see me picking on New Age spiritualists as much or any some of the other belief systems that are crazy. There's no evidence for it. But when it comes to, in America, Christianity, man, we, we have to stand up against it. Um, so would you guys agree that any movement there's been, LGBT rights, uh, civil rights back in the 50s, 60s, and so forth, there was always a small percentage of people in the front lines that did the activism. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's always going to be people in the back who 
weren't as active in a voice. Um, and, and that could be for a lot of reasons. It can be for safety reasons. It could be because they don't know how. It could be, you know, tons and tons of things. Um, we just, I, I feel like in our movement in particular, our vision just isn't as clear mm-hmm. because we've always been so divided on so many things. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at Pew Research statistics that say what the political beliefs are, atheists are. You know, most of them are left-leaning, you know, mm-hmm. about 70%, but you still got, you know, a good 30% that are Republican or so. So, you know, there's there's some uh, battles going on there, right, in that kind of realm. Um, when uh, compared to, like, let's look at the LGBT rights movement. Mm-hmm. What was that? That was a single-issue thing, right? It was just rights for LGBT. It, you know, you couldn't make it more simple than that, honestly. And, and what do we want as atheists? You know, we do want separation of church and state. That's true. But, you know, some people want more than that. Some mm-hmm. people want all these kind of other things. And so the more issues you kind of pile on to it, the less agreement you're going to see amongst people who have kind of different visions for society. Mm-hmm. So I think the best solution that we could have is to kind of simplify things to just a general secular movement. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and in my opinion, it's to stop discrimination. Yeah. Uh, that's that's how I see it. But I, I think that's the, the best way to move forward, in my mm-hmm. opinion. No, I, I'm going to mm-hmm. agree with you because, yeah. Andrew, when we go out, and you've been out with me before mm-hmm. yeah. on the Ask an Atheist, people do ask why you do this. One reason is to normalize it. Exactly. For equality, for acceptance yes. in a very Christian culture, discrimination. And that's what I desire the most because mm-hmm. I know at the end of the day I'm not going the, – by the time I die – there's going to be Christians out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. it's just the fact of reality. So yeah. why not just create a world where I can at least live amongst each other in yeah. peace yeah. instead of just convincing everybody to be exactly the yeah. way I am? That's that's the way. I, I mean, one day we'll get there, maybe, but yeah. I won't live to see that day. So but, I got to do what I can do while I'm here. You know what I mean? can we make changes Absolutely. by people sitting <laughs> in their little secular groups not wanting to get involved? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. You got to do something. Is just being a nice guy atheist going to change people? Is it going to change? You can be nice, but you've got to get out there and do something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's the way I look at it. I do agree. Yeah. yeah um, so let's move on a little bit. Um, a lot of people look for meaning and purpose in life. And I've talked to fellow atheists who recently have left Christianity and they let go of that... Um, that group, right, the community of believers. And some people have told me, you know, the thing I miss about church is I don't have that that passion or the community um, that gave me meaning and purpose in life. And now as an atheist, I'm kind of going through this little nihilistic stage in my life where I can't find meaning and purpose and or even happiness. So we were discussing this the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, so to me, you can find meaning and purpose in life as an atheist, right? One way to do it is to get involved outside yourself, right? The old Maslow's hierarchy of needs, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the uh, getting above the level of basic needs and getting into helping other people. But we were talking about that yesterday. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it, it's definitely relevant to me because uh, I remember when I first became atheist in my early 20s, and throughout most of my 20s, I kind of didn't have any great impulse to get involved in activism or politics or anything, but I read voraciously about stuff. I mean, I read dozens of Noam Chomsky books, and uh, you know, I read various atheist books, the ones that existed back then, you know, Bertrand Russell and James Randi, et cetera. And, but I didn't do anything about it and looking and I remember having this kind of almost nihilistic attitude that, mm-hmm. yeah, the world is crazy, the world is screwed, but uh, at least I know better and I'm just going to sit back here on the sidelines eating yeah. my popcorn and yeah. while the world burns. You know, yeah. and that may have that may have you know been a, uh, like a artificial ego boost for me at the time, but it got old after a few years, and mm-hmm. I started realizing this isn't fulfilling. This isn't you know, uh, I I you know I, I it just like okay I it it just it wasn't enough. You know, mm-hmm. you can't just be you can't be that way forever. You know, you it, it you 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 just it it it. It, it it just it just makes makes you feel like a like a like a bad person, <laughs> you know. Mm. Uh, so I and I and and we've we there's been psychological research on this that has found that yeah uh, when people when people spend their free time chasing happiness, 
trying tra- chasing pleasure they never actually catch it you know because it's they it, it's it, it's never entirely fulfilling yeah you can live your life for yourself and just do whatever makes you happy in the moment mm-hmm. but there you you know that's and of course that's where religion preys on that oh, n- gosh, notion yeah. that you know that hedonism yeah right yeah and and but it's in a way religion is right about that mm-hmm. is that yeah it's not enough you know and and so you can fill that void with spiritual nonsense mm-hmm. or you can fill it with something that's actually rational and logical and truly helpful long term mm-hmm. and that brings me to a quote from atheist daniel dennett on this very subject and you read this quote and you think that sounds like something a religious person spiritual person would say but this is for one of the four horsemen daniel dennett he said the secret of happiness find something more important than you are and dedicate your life to it so if you spend your time chasing your own personal happiness you may you'll probably never get there you're going to be disappointed but if you forget about that and then and instead focus on doing doing good for others you know helping others yeah happiness comes will come naturally to you when you aren't even kind of trying to get it but let's see a lot of christians will say you're just copying christianity See, that, <laughs> that's a Christian virtue and so forth. Because I remember mm-hmm. as a child, my dad would always preach and say, get your mind off yourself. My dad was a pastor. Get your mind off yourself. Put it on other people. And I would think back as a child, wow, that's a divine revelation. That must be godly wisdom straight from the Bible. You know, mm-hmm. It's just human. We all know that. And it's very true. Um, and there's so many different things that fellow atheists can do. And I remember doing, um, I did a, a a series, I think, at Oasis last year, a two or three part series on uh, activism. And there's direct activism and indirect activism. Some people are not wired to do, to speak like this or get in mm-hmm. front of, do public speaking, debate people. But there's so many things that atheists that want to get involved in activism can do behind the scenes. That would be the indirect atheist activism. They can support financially fellow activists. Um, they can encourage them. They can do. They can write articles. They can vote. <laughs> There's so many different things to do behind the scenes, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so for my generation, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with Reddit, David. Mm-hmm. You ever go on there? A little bit. So r slash atheism is probably the largest atheist internet forum out there. I check it. Yeah, pretty much every other day, you know, check out on atheist news and things like that. And it's a good way to have discussions with other people and kind of talk about these things. Unfortunately, there's a stigma, even on the Internet, a a place that, you know, probably has the broadest sense of free speech out there of atheists who are just these kind of fedora wearing, you know, like, oh, you know, kind of cheeky people who are just kind of mean and and who just want to talk about atheism all the time. Um, And that stigma persists even on that website, Reddit. Uh, where they have the largest atheist forum, you know, mm. anywhere else. And so it's there. It's kind of a PR problem that we are battling with here at the same time. Uh, yeah. That goes beyond just simple doing, you know, we want to do these good things to kind of almost improve our image, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever the, the, again, back to the LGBT rights thing, when that was becoming more popular, you started to see them more and more in media, and not all those depictions were positive. But they were you, more people were talking about it, and I think as long as more people are talking about it, more people are seeing it, more people are kind of thinking mm-hmm. about it, and that's probably the best way to go. You know. Okay, while I got you here, yeah, I know you're probably forty years younger than I am because uh-huh. I got kids over 10, 15 years older than you. Mm-hmm. I got to ask you, you're millennials. It's true. What do you see in the secular community as far as are, keeping it relevant to the topic? As far as passion for activism versus apathy and so forth. What do you see in the secular, humanist, atheist, agnostic community in the millennials? Well, I mean, we have the same problems as any other generation as far as motivating people. If anything, we probably have it worse. Um, You look at 2016 election results, I think like, what, 15% of millennials voted for it or something, something crazy low. Right, exactly. If millennials voted at the same rate that baby boomers voted, Well, well, we'd have a Bernie Sanders presidency, but we'd at least have a Hillary Clinton presidency. Yeah, so with the age of the Internet, with the age of fake news, with the age of everything going on, uh, most of us don't know what's true. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's probably our biggest problem. So, like, we we have a really big problem on taking a stand about things. Uh, we're kind of the generation that kind of started looking up the first thing we saw on Google and saying, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, that's got to be the truth. I think everybody does that. I don't think that's just millennials. But, you know, the, like, the Internet is our resource guide for everything yeah. when we look into stuff. And whatever is being said on there is, is what we first latch on to to kind of, you know, form our opinions and ideas. And unless we do these kind of deeper research yeah. on these topics – we're not as informed about what we can do and what's out there and what kind of options are for us. So um, honestly, it's a, like I said, it's a problem of not understanding what to do. I think I think there's a problem in communication. Hmm. Isn't it just a lack of using critical thinking? I'm not saying that millennials don't use mm-hmm. critical thinking, but it's almost, to me, it's like getting into the realm of relativism. It's, there are no absolute facts and truth. I think it's more whatever. Of a, I think that's part of it, but I think we live in more echo chambers, maybe. Definitely. Um, because the geography isn't as much of a problem anymore in these kinds of things. It's the people that you see online like I said, you go to our atheism, our slash atheism every single day, you're going to get the same opinions and they're going to reinforce your beliefs. And, and by the time that you go to talk to somebody religious about it, you know, you're going to be so different from that person because you keep hearing these same people that agree with you on the same things. And that's what happens with religious people mm. as well. You go to church every week, you hear the same things. So um, the problem is we have more of that problem now than we did before, even though it should be the opposite, yeah. right? We have mm-hmm. more access to these other things. But instead, because of the way search results are cultivated on the Internet, because of the way these kinds of forums are made, it, it almost is worse. So, yeah, And that's, that's a great point. And, and I've, I've been beating this drum for years now. We absolutely must get outside of our comfort zone. And and maybe I'm weird, but for me, the the conversations I enjoy the most are ha- when I'm ha- able to have productive conversations with people I disagree with. Mm-hmm. So there's ways to, to approach people you disagree with and have a civil, productive conversation, even if you start out disagreeing vehemently on something. To, to pronounce vehemently. Vietnamly? Vietnam. I, I can't even pronounce it. I, I need another <laughs> cup of coffee. Guys. Right, right. <laughs> But, uh, you know, there, there's ways of if, – if we just get outside of our comfort zone, outside our echo cham- chamber a little bit, everybody should make an mm-hmm. effort to do that once in a while uh, and talk to people who you disagree with. And, you know, you'll get better and better at having those conversations without them turning into flame wars or turning into – knock down drag out fights uh, you get better and better with practice of of finding ways to de-escalate those you know the potential you know mm-hmm. headbutting and you know and that's what i love about what me what david and i and the and the others do like when we when we're talking to these christians and we're listening they, they feel that we're listening to them mm-hmm. and then you know they hear what we have to say and it's it just it's my favorite thing to do. I'd yeah. rather have those conversations than just spend all day telling people I agree with, oh, yeah, thumbs up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Well, well, that doesn't get you anywhere. Well, you and I have talked about this for, what, four years now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love these little secular atheist groups and meetup groups. You meet with people that are have coincidal philosophies and worldview. Mm-hmm. It's comfortable. We all need friends of the same belief system and so mm-hmm. forth. Mm-hmm. But um, honestly, I, I like that. We all need that to be social. But man, I, I'm like you. I, I would mm. rather be out there having dialogue. So this is interesting because these are the three people in this room who probably have the more, more conversations with other Christians than a, most atheists just in general, just oh, yeah. because of the way that we do things. And I think all three of us kind of value that. We need that outsider perspective to remind us that even if we think that we're right, we can't just go around acting that we're right because nobody wants to listen to that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Somebody wants to listen to the person who's willing to listen to them and willing to walk through what they're thinking. You know, And if we just sit on our high horses and pretend, oh, you're stupid and, and we're right and you know yeah. we're not even doing anything about it, you're not going to convince anybody to change their mind. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just human nature that we got to work with. Yeah. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you and I have discussed this mm-hmm. before because there are different methodologies of activism and debate. Mm-hmm. And by the way, uh, Andrew and I have got an episode coming up, which will be released probably after this one. I'm so excited about <laughs> it. And I told you we're going to do a mock debate. I can't wait. I'm going to play myself 30 to 40 years ago mm-hmm. uh, as a evangelist Christian preacher. And Andrew is going to be a um, unbeliever, an atheist. I'm going to I'm going to play and I'm going to play sort of myself, but I'm going to play an atheist who's never even read the Bible. Yeah, this is <laughs> so I, I'm so fired up about this. But how 
Uh, you can win a debate with a Christian so easily just by, well, Socratic method is one way to get mm-hmm. him to think, right? Yeah, yeah. And as I always do, I bring this with me on many shows. <laughs> Wait, can you all see that? This is a weight. Yes, I'm a personal trainer, and I carry weights in my car when I go to my client's home. This is a little weight, and uh, I use this as an analogy. That's the weight of evidence and the burden of proof that must be placed upon who? The believer. So we always have to remember that. So we're going to do that in our next coming episode. I'm really excited about that. So um, so you guys want to share anything else before we get to the next point here? Yeah, one thing I just wanted to add when talking about people about, you know, from my generation, like I'm, I'm a very late millennial. I'm almost Gen Z. Um, I won't say exactly how old I am, but I'm kind of young. So oh, like, I, I think the uh, another thing that really just uh, is more unique to our generation is we kind of figured out atheism through the Internet. I think a lot mm-hmm. of us did that. And so YouTube channels and stuff are a lot more popular amongst my crowd of people, along with reading books and things. I mean, we're mostly pretty educated people, mm-hmm. um, but like... Like the kind of popular topics that come up, we, we watch in video form and somehow. I think that's a major part of how we do things. And so um, I, I talk about this on my own personal channels and stuff too, if you can. And if you want to find another way to talk about these things, start a blog mm-hmm. or start a YouTube channel or f- contact me, contact some other people that, you know, I know through the atheist YouTube community. Uh, they started off just like everybody in this room. They were just some guy who, you know, had something to say. And uh, people listen to that, especially if you're well-researched and uh, you sound like you know what you're talking about at least. <laughs> and so yeah, that's another thing to consider too as far as things you can do. You don't always have to go out on the street. There right. are other ways to kind of – you can do it on your computer and still make a difference. Yeah. You know? So mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And is it, that's diversity. Mm-hmm. I say that all the time. Yeah. We have diversity around here and I, I love the diversity, all the different styles. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, finding passion, meaning in life, happiness in life, just get involved, think about others, and what a wonderful challenge. And if you want to challenge fellow atheists out there and you want to find something to do, there's so much to do. I mean, we have the atheists helping the homeless here. Uh, we've got other different avenues and things to reach out to help other people. There are all kinds of secular groups that do things for others. And then there's good old-fashioned atheist activism like we do. You can go out there with us on the weekends and talk to people. You can get in touch with Daniel Mm -hmm. and other YouTubers around here in Austin at the Atheist Community of Austin and just get involved um, indirectly or directly. um, And we can make a difference in this world. Definitely. And, you know, I'd like to address uh, the issue that's been in the news the last couple weeks about, uh, you know, depression and suicide, you know, how the rates are going up and, you know, and I, I've found that one of the, if there's anybody out there, if you're an atheist or non-believer and, and you feel like isolated or you feel uh, like you are lacking purpose and, and, and you feel depressed or even, you know, suicidal, uh, if, 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 if that's the case, the, the best cure for that, and, you know, it's not a, it's not a panacea, but mm-hmm. the best cure I've found is, you know, is getting engaged, mm-hmm. helping people, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's better than home for most people. It's better than any pill, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah. and so if, if you're feeling, you know, like, you know, in, in a depressed state and, mm-hmm. and alone, Get out there and get involved, help people, even if it's not in atheism. Yeah, yeah. You know? Can I tell you, so the most satisfying feelings I've ever gotten in Mm -hmm. my entire life was when I was at the American Atheist Conference this year. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to people and said, hey, I know you. I've seen your stuff. You made me think about this way or this and this and that, you know, and, and, you know, you've... like I've changed them in some way, mm-hmm. you know, knowing that I've done that, knowing that I've impacted people is the most satisfying thing in the mm. world. Uh, and I, I'm sure you guys would agree. I mean, it's to know that you're making a difference in this world, temporary or not. You, you're not going to think about that in the moment when someone tells you you did a good job. I, mm-hmm. I guarantee it. It's just it's a wonderful feeling. And so the activism for me is its own reward. Mm-hmm. Um, and you kind of realize that the more that you do it. But getting started, it's kind of not as easy sometimes. And you don't really get to see it, the long-term picture. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. And just think mm-hmm. of all the people that we've affected through the years. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't know. I don't know the fruit of the labor, right? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. we've sown a lot of seeds of doubt, right, Andrew? We've been into many mm-hmm. churches, many Sunday school classes, talked to thousands of people through the years, and we don't really know how many people we've affected. Because mm-hmm. uh, I can still remember the incident where a guy questioned me when I was about 21 as a young preacher in my dad's church, uh, and he asked me a question in his class, well, what about the genocide and the fanticide in the Old Testament? How would a loving God do that? And just that one seed he planted, I'll never forget as a 21-year-old preacher years ago, and I justified it, obviously. Well, it was God's will. That would, The Canaanites and Philistines were a type of sin. God hates sin, so he had to kill them all mm-hmm. and make sex slaves and all this crap, right? So I had lots of justification and rationalizations in that. But that one question stuck with me and plagued me for years. I talk about this in mm-hmm. my in previous episodes. So we don't know who we're affecting. I, I'm the same way. Uh, what's weird is that my one of my big moments is caught on camera <laughs> with really? Anthony. You know, I mean, oh yeah, when I first talked with him, you know, I never forgot that conversation. Do you remember something, a seed that he planted that what just stuck with you? And yeah, it was it was the outsider's test of faith. It was this idea of, well, if I'm using faith to justify my beliefs, and if a Muslim is doing the exact same mm-hmm. thing I am, and saying that he only believes in God because of faith, and not because of any scientific or historical reasons, because I, I really didn't have any at the time, then, then what is the difference between me and somebody else who believes? Mm-hmm. And, like, it's so simple. It, like, to us, it's so obvious, but to someone who just never thought that way before, yeah. it, was, it was like... Yeah. A whole new world. And so, like, I had to take a long time of exploring. I mean, like I said, it took me a year and a half before I finally decided to come out. But it started with just those little things. And it wasn't the only thing either. It, other people influenced my life as well. But those big ones, like you said, you don't forget about those, mm-hmm. those yeah. little moments. Do you think, I, I was going to ask you guys what you think about this. Sometimes I get, I make a major mistake. Oh, my God. Oh, hey, who's this? It's we Eric. have an intruder. Eric Murphy. <laughs> everybody knows hey, everybody. Eric Murphy. Up, come on Eric? in, man. <laughs> What up, dude? Dan the man. Dan the man's with us today. What is Dan doing here? Oh, my goodness. Just around, you know. Oh, I love it. So, Eric, I was actually going to finish this thing up in five minutes. I'm so sorry. So, we were talking about, I'm going to let you talk real quick before I close. We were talking about, okay, we'll keep going a little bit longer. Um, So, we were talking about uh, apathy in the atheist community. Oh, man. And how it seems to be pretty prevalent, and we're trying to encourage people to find a place to get some mm-hmm. passion about making a change in the world, mm-hmm. how there's direct and indirect ways to do Really, it. we just wanted to know what you were doing wrong. I mean, we know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, you know what? Honestly, I was an apatheist for a very long time, and I totally understand where a lot of people can sit on the fence and go, oh, this really isn't my fight, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But when it comes to what we're doing... You know, people don't see when we get reached out. You know, I, I, I get emails for uh, TV at atheist-community.org, and you would not believe the number of people every day who say, "This is my community. I'm somewhere where mm-hmm. I can't talk to somebody. I'm somewhere where, you know, I could lose my family, my job, my wife, my kids. I could lose everything." And knowing that I'm not alone in this world, where we are together Mm -hmm. is so important. And so for those of you out there who are wondering, oh, I'm in a safe place, but I really don't know if this is the place for me. Just being an out atheist Mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. better than being an apatheist because being that person that somebody can see and go, that person's like me. I'm not alone. Or that a a Christian or, you know, someone who's religious to be able to look and go, oh, that's what an atheist looks like. Mm. It's not this hyperbolic monstrous thing that I've Mm -hmm. made up in my head. No, it is a good person. Each of you at this table I've seen outside of this room, and I, I can tell you that you're some of the kindest, most empathetic, giving, caring people that I know. And that right there makes me so proud. Yeah. It's like a group hug, you know? Every time <laughs> yeah, I walk hug. into this building. We're too far apart to have well, a group hug. But, 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 but so, yeah, it is. I would have called that the Holy Spirit a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You know? So yeah. yeah. Right, but it's it's that sharing in our humanity. Beautiful. It's creating that community together outside of the need of, uh, you know, to to say that there's some omnipotent sky father who, who commands you to be good to each other. We're good to each other because that's the right thing to Beautiful. do. We're good to each other because it feels good and because we're building that together. And and doing huh. preach it, that, preach, preach man, it, brother. Doing that, yeah. I absolutely love that you're having this conversation mm. because if you are an apatheist, please, please consider if this is an okay time in your life to do that. Being an out atheist is worth it. That said, 
if you can't, don't. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there are some instances where yeah. some people can't, but most probably could. Now, we're talking about passion. That was passion. Good ah. job. You got me all fired up. <laughs> so, yeah, some of us do have passion, and I think we need to get other people fired up for this. So, um, you know what? I think you just confirmed something. Just by listening to you uh, give that nice little talk there, Eric, I was going, I'm thinking about doing a talk on building an atheist community and the importance of it, right? Um, and uh, if we do that, if I give a message on that, we're well, definitely going to have to come on the round table on that. We can talk about the importance of community because so many people miss that part of church, right? Without the supernaturalism, just being human, having p- good people around, doing things together and so forth. So, Well, and those of us who are listening, those of you who are listening, you are a part of this discussion too. There is a Preaching Humanist Facebook discussion group. And if you would like to join, if you'd like to come in, say hi, say hi to us, say hi to each other so you can continue the conversation, please do so. Please consider joining the discussion group and any of our other ACA discussion groups across our different social media channels because it's not just us. It's not just listening to us. It's interacting and and, and building that like we're talking about. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm excited about all this. You guys want to share anything else before I close up about apathetic atheists and how we can get more passion for the movement? Oh, man. I know you came in at the very end. I know you've got a lot to say. (laughs) And I'm so, so glad that I get to be here. Um, You know, when it comes to being an apathetic atheist, yeah. um, What can we do to get them to see the importance of activism or at least supporting activists? Well, you know, not everybody can. And if you can't, consider just being a member. Mm -hmm. I mean... Being a member of organizations like the ACA or hopping on and supporting what we do on Patreon or um, any of those things enables us to go out and do that and do that. So as an example, you all go out and do ask an atheist. Yeah. You you go out to different places where, mm-hmm. you know, there, there are big meetings like that. And that costs money. Mm-hmm. It costs money to rent a booth. You know, I mean, it's hot out in the Texas summer. Very hot. And water bottles are not too much to ask for, but we Mm -hmm. are a volunteer organization. This is a 501c3 nonprofit. So if you're wondering, how can I help this movement, Mm -hmm. this organization, please, please consider contributing, I mean, on Patreon, a dollar a month. Become a member. Um, Those are things that can help us continue to do what we're doing. Beautiful. And if you want to start something locally, get in touch. Get in touch with us so that we can help you there, too. Give them the information how they get in touch with you um, and the ACA. Just Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so you can get in touch with me. I'm Eric, E-R-I-C, at atheist-community.org. Um, you can go to the Atheist Community of Austin's website and... Um, Check us out on social media. We're on Facebook. Talk Heathens on Reddit. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have Twitter pages. Uh, We're on Instagram. Uh, We're trying to be there to meet you where you are. So look us up Mm -hmm. and say hi. All right. Beautiful. All right, man, we're going to close it up. I had a blast, guys. What a great Mm -hmm. topic. Thanks for coming. Sorry you didn't get to come in earlier, but I know you were busy with your activist stuff, stuff, (laughs) which is great. So, Daniel, thanks. Yeah, before we go, can we remind uh, the viewers uh, of uh, Dan's Dan's YouTube channel podcast, uh, how people can find them? Convention coming up. Convention. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. 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 I mentioned that at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, so first off, I'll say, so I'm. you can find me on the Street Epistemology YouTube channel, uh, but that's also on iTunes as well. Uh, the Street Epistemology podcast is called Epistemic. Uh, and I have my own YouTube channel called Objectively Dan. Again, not as much content right now. Very busy with lots of different stuff, being here, doing school, all that. Um, but there's more stuff on the way. Uh, the best way to find me is on Twitter. It's at Objectively Dan. Um, and you can also find me on the Street Epistemology Epistemology Facebook groups. Um, our study group is probably one of the best ways to find me if you just look at one of the members and my name is there. Um, and again, I'm going to be speaking at the Secular Student Alliance in two weeks in Columbus, Sweet. Ohio. Woo! Doing a workshop on street epistemology. Joining me there will be genetically modified skeptic. Oh! And nice. telltale atheist. Oh! 
So we got a lot of people coming, um, and it's just going to be a blast. I'm so looking forward to it. So If you are in the area and you haven't gotten a ticket, if you're not going, what are you doing with your life? Yeah. You get to meet this handsome, tall, dark, and amazing human being. Yeah. You get to see some of that live going on. Secular Student Alliance alone is worth going to, but yeah, this yeah. And if you won't fantastic. be able to catch it, um, they will be uploading it to their YouTube channel. I think it's the Secular Student Alliance YouTube page, um, so you can check me out on there, too. So, all right, man. Yeah. The great news. I'm fired up. So, all right, everybody. Thanks for watching the Atheist Roundtable. And thank you, Daniel, for coming on the show. Thank you, Dave. Again. Yeah. And, of course, Andrew and Eric. Thanks for popping in. I appreciate all you do. All right. Y'all have a wonderful day. Bye. Woo.